Hey everyone, Grant K for the Flame Learning Channel. In the previous video on Matchbox Texture Grid Shaders, you learned the basics of customising the grid image. So you can replace the grid cells for any textures or elements you want. In the previous example, you didn't need to edit any GLSL code because we kept the grid the same pixel size as the original example file and we also kept the original number of cells which was 9. In this video, we'll advance the texture grid customization by increasing the number of cells as well as use a different size grid. This will involve us digging into the GLSL code in order to update the grid resolution and cell size. We'll finish off the example by doing some texture replacements in action to make some really cool HUD graphics. If you would like to follow along, please click the link in the YouTube description to download the media. Alternatively, if you're watching the podcast version of this video, then type the link displayed in your web browser. Now before we start, I just want to point out that you do not need to load a texture grid image into the Flame products in order to use it with a Matchbox texture grid shader. I've just done this so we can take a closer look at the grid image. Now depending on your use cases, the cells could be filled with logos, text or any graphic element you want. Looking at the image in the full screen viewer, the resolution of the image is 1600 by 1600 pixels. Using a 4x4 texture grid, we get 16 cells which are 400 pixels by 400 pixels across. Remember this information as you'll need to update it in your shader's GLSL code. Now let's jump out of flame and start customising a Matchbox texture grid shader. As part of the Flame products install, you are provided with GLSL example files that you can work with and make your own. Just navigate to forward slash user forward slash discrete forward slash presets forward slash 2017 forward slash matchbox forward slash shaders forward slash examples. I'm using a file browser, but you can use a terminal or shell if you prefer. So here's all the example files that are provided with the software. As a reminder, the Matchbox Texture Grid shader is made up of a number of files. There are GLSL files, XML files and image files. Remember that you can identify them through their corresponding file name. For this example, we are going to use the Grid Fetching Replace shader. So let's go through the following steps to customise the Matchbox shader. Step 1. Select all the relevant files with the exception of the EXR file and the MX file. I have supplied a new EXR in the downloads and the MX file is the encrypted version of the Matchbox shader. Something I've not mentioned before is that the PNG file is a thumbnail you can display in Flame when browsing for a Matchbox shader. This is not crucial for the customization, so you can edit it in your own time. Now copy these files and paste them into a directory that you can easily access. Also ensure you copy the downloaded texture grid image into the same directory. Step 2. Rename all the files so that they have the corresponding file name. In this case, you can change the grid fetching replace name to HUD. Please remember not to change anything after the full stop. Once you're done, step 3 is to associate the grid image with the shader. You do this by adding texture grid before the file extension. This is case sensitive, so everything should be in lowercase except for the G. Now all these files form the structure of the Matchbox texture grid shader. When you save a batch setup or iterate a version, these files will get copied into the setup or iteration directories. This ensures that when you move or even archive the composite, everything is saved and will look the same as before. From this point onwards, the next steps involve customising the GLSL code and the XML sidecar file. So for step 4, Open the hud.1.glsl file in your favourite text editor. Now if you've never done this before 
and it looks intimidating, please do not worry. The only thing you're going to do here is tell the GLSL code the resolution sizes for the grid as well as the defined cell or tile size. Just after line 28 of the code, you should see tile size and grid size. The values in the brackets represent the horizontal and vertical pixel values. So for tile size, set the pixel values to 400 since our tiles are square. And for grid size, set the resolution to 1600 by 1600 pixels. Nothing else should need modification in this file. Now save this file and close the editor. Step 5 involves editing the XML sidecar file with a few customizations. Double click on the HUD.XML and open it in your text editor. Here we need to define the name and description of the Matchbox Texture Grid shader as well as update the pop up choices. So to set the name and description, scroll through the first line of the code and you will find the name value. Edit the name to say HUD Elements instead of Grid Fetching Replace. Next to the name value, edit the description to tell the artist the purpose of the shader. So with the name and description taken care of, you can now move on to the pop-up entry titles to add more as well as rename them. Look through the code and locate the beginning of the pop-up entry titles. Currently, the pop-up entry titles give you only 9 choices as part of the original example shaders. We need to increase this to 16 to make all the grid tiles available. Select the first 7 pop-up choices and copy them to memory. Now after the 9th pop-up entry, make a new line and paste the extra entries to increase the list of choices. Now the title entry is the name that will be displayed for each tile or cell of the grid. You can call these whatever you want. The value entry defines each choice in the pop-up list. So you need to have a different value per entry. It starts at 0. So increment this all the way up to 15. I'll jump forward in time to my completed version. So you should have renamed all your titles for every choice and the values go from 0 to 15 to define each entry. Once you're done, save your XML file. Now let's go back to Flame. Now we're going to use the Action 3D Compositor to layer up surfaces to build our HUD elements. So my recommendation is to create a surface that matches the resolution of each texture grid tile so that you don't get unnecessary distortions. Go to the Batch node bin and drag out a Color Source node. Double click on the node for its controls. Set the width and height to 400 pixels. Also set the aspect ratio to calculate by width and height. This will give you a ratio of 1. Now go back to the Batch node bin and drag out a fresh action node. Create a new media input with Control N and connect the color source into the red front input. Now double click on action for its controls and press Alt 2 for a 2 up view. Action Schematic on the left and Result View on the right. To apply the Matchbox Texture Grid to the surface, select the Surface Object in the Schematic. Now switch to the Action Node Bin menu. In the All Nodes tab, locate the Matchbox node and double click it for the file browser. Navigate to the directory containing your new Matchbox shader. Load the shader and it will connect itself using a diffuse texture map to the surface object. So there is your first element. You can use the axis to size and position it if you want. You can also use the image controls to set the blending modes and transparencies. Please set the blend mode to screen. Now to add another element, hold control and draw a box selection around the node branch. 
press Ctrl D to duplicate the node selection. Arrange the nodes how you would like and click the Matchbox node of the new branch. Change the selection to a new texture and set it up accordingly. Hopefully you get the general idea. You can keep duplicating the branch and changing the textures to add more elements to the composite. You can also throw in a bit of animation to make things interesting. So here is a final example of just experimenting with the shader and it was so quick and easy to switch textures and create different looks. There is so much you can do with Matchbox Texture Grid shaders, whether in action with surfaces or lens flares, or even as a Matchbox node in Batch, where you can customize the shader functionality to do whatever you need with the Texture Grid image. Be sure to check out the other videos covering the features, workflows and updates to the Flame 2017 products. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Learning channel for future videos.